Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and happy 2018. Today's video is inspired by my love for corsets. Now, the corset first became popular back in the 16th century Europe. While corset started out as an undergarment in more modern times, the garment is now worn on the outside of your other clothing, like the ones that I'm showing here, which are actually waist center corsets, also known as an underbust corset, are more fun, unique fashion statements. I do pull inspiration from all over, but my favorite are the comic book ones. But the one that really made me fall in love with them is this one, which is the Harley Quinn corset from the video game. Now, shameless plug, I did get to meet this fine man a few years back, and I did make a handmade corset that had his image on it, as well as three of my favorite Marvel characters. He did sign my corset, and I just have to say, this was a super honor to meet such a legend. All of the patches that are made on this corset were actually done using my sewing machine using a technique called thread art, which I do have videos for. Binding a corset can be done in several different ways. I am going to show you the way that I personally like to do it. We are going to be using this corset you see here. So let's go ahead and jump right into the video. Today I am going to be using a Teflon foot because I will be sewing with faux leather. There are several feet on the market. The biggest tip I can say is make sure that the foot has this white coating on the bottom of it. Do not be fooled by a knockoff. There is a foot like this one that is just straight plastic. They claim that it's Teflon, but I honestly have not been able to find one that will actually work over the top of any pleathers or vinyls and it'll make you crazy. <laughs> so just be careful um, the type of foot that you are purchasing. Now I have already constructed part of my corset. I do not have the boning or the eyelets in it yet. I like to start off doing my binding at the top of the corset before I do any of that just to make sure that I'm not contending with boning. As a quick disclaimer, this bias tape is made exactly the same way other bias tape is made. Just because the fabric has changed doesn't change the rules of the way that you construct it. And I am using a size 14 leather needle. Quick recap on bias tape. If you're not good at sewing a straight line or you need that little extra guidance, I like to use my favorite white gel pen to mark out the bias tape, which is not completely true because I live life on the edge and I usually just sew. Now you can pin in this lower corner uh, to keep the fabric from shifting on you if you need to. And the one big thing I'm gonna say is stitch from corner to corner. And just so you can see that pros make mistakes too, this is kind of a happy mistake though, just to show you. If you don't sew into that corner right there, you get this step right here. That'll make your life a living you know what <laughs> for trying to add it to your project. So we'll go ahead and clip that off and try again. And you can see it goes from that little point in that edge and that little point to that edge. You wanna make it look like it's a non-ending piece of fabric. It's combining bias tape. Now that we've done that, I'm going to splay open the back flaps of the bias tape and I'm just going to sew straight down both sides, kind of in the shape of a box. Pretty simple. And then what I'll do is I'll turn to the back and I will go ahead and snip off these edges that I do not need. This will help reduce bulk and I'm not worried about the fact that I have just those center threads holding the bias tape together because the bias tape is actually meant to bind, not to hold the garment together. So I like to have a whole lot of this bias tape on deck so I don't have to stop what I'm doing and make some when I need it. So usually what I'll do is I'll go through and I'll make a big roll of it at one time and then you, you can get really quick at making this bias tape the more that you do it. and when you're done, if you have a whole bunch left over, you can use it for your next project. And I really think it just makes your projects look more professional. So I am going to start from the back of the corset using this big bag of Wonder Clips that I've got right here. 
and we'll grab the bias tape and usually what I'll do is I'll go ahead and stick the roll in my lap or I'll stick it to the right hand side of the sewing machine so that way it stays rolled up and nice. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to take the right side of the bias tape and I'm going to face the right side toward the wrong side of the corset. I'm going to put my needle in the right hand position and I believe my stitch length is right around a three. A two and a half to a three, just kind of depends on the type of fabric that you're working with. Since I'm using pleather, I don't want too many puncture marks, so I'm using a three. Uh, we'll go ahead and we'll back tack in here. When you go to position your fabric, make sure you have your needle in down position. I'm not always good at doing that all the time, but I do like to keep that as a general rule of thumb when I can remember. <laughs> So you can see what I'm doing. The edge of my corset is actually lined up with the edge of that foot, which gives me roughly about a fourth of an inch in. And we're gonna go ahead and add my trusty clothing label. So you know it's from yours truly. And then we're gonna zoom you in so you can kind of get a good idea of what I'm doing. I'm just adding the bias tape to the top of this. I'm not pulling. Um, and I'm just kind of maneuvering it with the top of the corset and when you get to the end we're gonna snip off about an inch away from that edge of the bias tape and then this my friends is Murphy's Law <laughs> so um, yeah if you want to see what I have to say about those things, you can always follow me on other social media because I do Snapchat when I'm doing projects like this. Now I'm going to go ahead and grab my favorite pair of crafting shears and we're going to true up this edge so it's parallel with the bias tape. And this will make sure that everything sits true on the outside when you finish. Now a huge tip here. I'm not real, I don't know, snip crazy like this, like doing these ease cuts in most of my garments. I'll just usually use like a pair of pinking shears, but notching your garment like this is definitely going to help. So rule of thumb, if you lay your corset out flat and you can see where that stitch line buckles in any way, or if there's any round areas, um, where it either arches up or arches down, you're going to want to put these little relief snips in there. This will make sure that your corset sits true to the body and doesn't bow out. And it'll make sure that that bias tape doesn't look unsightly when you get done. I don't know how else to explain that. <laughs> But definitely go through and put, I mean, at least a half a dozen is what I usually do on one side. Now for option one of the binding. This one is with no understitching. This is one of the ways that you can do the binding. What you'll do is you'll turn your corset to the front side and with your fingers behind, you'll just pull that bias tape around the front and then do a kind of a double fold. And then we'll go ahead and grab a wonder clip. I like to put the clear side of the clip on the outside of the bias tape because it is the flat side of the clip. The other side is kind of rounded and I think the flat side holds it taut to the corset better. And then you would do your top stitch about an eighth of an inch away from that edge. And here's a look at the back. Here's for option two binding. This is with understitching and this is the way that I prefer. We're gonna go ahead and put our needle in the center position. And then we're just gonna go ahead and stitch about an eighth of an inch away from that edge. And you wanna make sure that you're kind of pulling your bias tape away from where you're sewing, where it's already connected. And here's my POV, so you can kind of get a better view of what I'm doing. 
<laughs> this is so awkward trying to sew with one hand and film with the other hand. I need to get a camera guy, but not yet. Not yet. Very soon, though. Needs to happen. <laughs> So we'll go ahead and speed through this because I'm just going to do that all the way around. And both of these apply to both sides of the corset as well as the binding on the bottom. Now that you've got your binding done or your understitching done, we're going to go ahead and finish up the edge. What I like to do is true up the side. And then I like to go ahead and do this long tapered cut at the top of the bias tape. Now the reason I do this is because this will reduce bulk because we're going to take the outside flap and fold it in right here and then we're going to fold the bias tape down onto it. So that little um, part that I clipped off is actually going to reduce bulk in your seam on the outside. Now. I have seen and I have done the other way where you fold that flap in before you attach the bias tape to the corset. But for me personally, there's some corsets that I make that are a little bit more um, fuller than others because of this center piece that I put in for more stability. And you can see that sticking out of that top edge. And for me, I personally don't like that. But again, that is personal preference. So. We'll go ahead and um, use our wonder clips and go ahead and clip all that bias tape down. Now we're going to start over here on this side. And what I like to do is I like to kind of make sure from front to back that everything looks uniform. I'm using a 3.5 on the stitch length or even a 4. It just kind of depends. I have no rhyme or reason why I do it. So I just do what I feel. <laughs> story of my life. Now I'm going to use my fingers and pinch the front of this corset and then put the needle down into the corset before I drop my foot. This will help everything from unraveling. And I know you guys are probably looking at this going, oh my gosh, you're going to sew through your finger. No. Okay. One thing that I do have to say is I know that there's a lot of people out there that are going to advise against using metal stilettos or that prefer to use a bodkin or a wooden tool or whatever it might be but you need to do what's comfortable for you with your own crafting. Um, for instance, there's a lot of people that would never use like a razor blade as opposed to a seam ripper, but I am gonna just let you know that in the industry, razor blades are used because it is more time efficient. So do what you're comfortable with and be safe. Now, this is just a quick clip of me doing the thread art with these um, wings and basically what I do is I look at uh, a visual reference I do a little bit of pencil sketching but most of that is actually done by sight and you can tell I've done it a couple times so <laughs> okay so that is it that is how I do the binding on my corsets I'm gonna go ahead and zoom you out um, I think that when you're doing leather corsets like this, it actually gives it a really good edge. And it also helps hold the boning in place a little bit better for me as well. I think that sometimes you get corsets that have bonings that kind of poke up and jab you in the ribs and that's no fun. And I think having that little extra padding up in that binding helps those um, bones from not gouging you in the side too much. Then you're gonna repeat on the other side of the corset the same way, but you wanna put these busks together before you do the binding on the other side to make sure that they do match up or you will have to pick it out and do it again. If you guys wanted to see a full video of me actually making a corset for start to finish, let me know in the comment section because we could probably make that happen. And there you have it. I hope this was a little bit of fun new information for you guys for bias binding. This can be done on a full busted corset and any other project that you have to bind, it can be done in the same fashion. As always, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel before you leave. Follow me on all other social media and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.